welcome to Restored by Polish. I'm Krista, and we're gonna do a little bit different video today. I haven't done this before, although I do lots of videos on combinations, which is sort of what this is, but I thought it would be fun to kind of go through my collection and just decide how do I whittle down my PPU wish list and beyond, because I think I went a little crazy here and I decided to do way more polishes uh, sort of duping i guess and then sometimes it's just polishes that i've had in my collection that are really similar to a few of the ones that are offered this month which we all know that that happens when you have a massive collection you just sometimes forget what's in your what you've got you know what, what's in your collection so i really took my time it took me quite a few hours of going through and looking and seeing you know do i really need this um i will say there are a couple that i uh, yeah, like I don't have anything like it. So, but we'll talk about that. A lot of them I was able to get really close or at least close enough that I feel like I don't need to purchase them. Um, you know, we can't buy them all. So you gotta, you gotta draw the line somewhere. So before we get started on that, I'm going to do a special request here. I have a subscriber. Her name is Rachel. Hi, Rachel. And actually it's kind of funny because Ever since I've been talking about having this bird with me, my son's bird, Echo, uh, who's now, I guess, sort of our bird since he can't have the bird where, with him where he moved to, uh, I've been having people reach out to me about how they love birds or they are bird owners themselves. And so I've been chit chatting with each of you out there that have uh, talked to me about that. So, uh, and with Rachel, we had talked about uh, a little scary thing that happened with um, with Echo. And so I, I promised her I would tell the story. So if you don't want to listen to the story, go ahead and fast forward through to the rest of the video. But I thought I would add this little story in because she really wanted to hear it. So this is the story of how we lost Echo outside, like out, outside, out the house, outside the house. Um, so Echo, like I mentioned, is my son's, my middle son's bird. His name is Dom. And he was going back up to school. He bought this bird when it was COVID and he was up in college and he was lonely. And so he got this bird and it was, he loves, loves this bird. He still loves this bird. And he was going back up. He had been visiting at home. It was after the holidays. And so he was going back up, but he had actually come down with a friend in a really small pickup truck, just a two cab pickup truck. So he had no room with all of his stuff, Christmas gifts and his friend's stuff. They couldn't fit the bird. In there and so our older son who we call q quentin we call him q uh he was heading up there in a couple weeks after that because his girlfriend at the time was going to school was a senior up at the same university and so which by the way it's the university where all the massive killings happened um university of idaho my middle son actually lived across the street on king's road from that house so not at the time that it happened thank goodness because i would have been a nervous wreck but that's just a little asterisk side story there just kind of crazy he actually my son actually which is sad he knew he knew one of the one of the victims which is kind of sad um anyway so q says don't worry dom well, I'm going up to see his, you know, see Hannah. And so I'll bring the bird with me when I come up. Great. So we get it all worked out. So my husband and I come back up here to the cabin. It is January. Actually, it was Martin Luther King Day. I'll never forget it. And we're just out kind of hiking around in the snow. And Q calls absolutely frantic, like he's screaming into the phone. <laughs> And uh, apparently when he went to take, they were leaving, he and his girlfriend to go back up to the university and he went to pick up the cage and he had it and he was walking out of the house with it. And as he got outside, almost into the car, it the top of the cage popped off. It just like broke, which I guess we sort of knew because that, that cage was a little wonky, but I didn't think to talk to him about it. But anyway, it popped off and Echo flew away. Just gone scared the bejeebies out of her and she flew off so and he's you know he's frantic he's like mom he, he said we've looked for over an hour we went everywhere we walked around the whole neighborhood she's gone she's just absolutely gone and he's like i already called dom i told him he's upset you know but you know he understands you know what happened and so he in their infinite wisdom i'm not really sure what they were thinking but they decided to just 
pack the cage and bring the cage, the empty cage and all the bird stuff back to Dom. I don't, I don't know if they thought they were gonna buy him a new one or if they just thought, well, at least he has the cage. I'm not sure. So anyway, they did that. And of course I called Dom and I said, you know, I'm, I know you're upset. I'm so sorry. Let me see what, I mean, I'll try, I'll go back. Let me see, you know, who knows? I, I didn't know what I could do, but my husband and I packed everything up. We go back down to the house and as we're driving down, I'm thinking, okay, what can we do? So I, we stopped by the pet store. I bought some bird treats. Not that she's ever really been a big treat eater, but I bought some bird treats. And then I thought, well, you know, I, I frantically posted on Nextdoor. I posted on Facebook, like community chats, like everywhere I could, like, hey, you know, our parakeet got out and 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 I've, I'm getting all these horrible messages like, oh, parakeets, they're not like pigeons. They have no homing instinct They're you know, she's gone. And I'm thinking, oh, thank you for your positive outlook. <laughs> and so, um, so anyway, I, um, when we got back there and we got back and I, I, you know, decided I would open up my iPad and, put like parakeet noises like chirping so like budgie video that played nonstop. and i started walking around the entire neighborhood i looked in every tree and i'm taking the ipad hoping that maybe the chirps would do something and i walked and walked and walked and yeah no luck can't find her so i did that for probably about an hour and a half and then i thought well let me just put the treats out with my husband has truck parked outside and i put the iPad on top of his truck with the video playing of the parakeet noises. And then I put the treats there too, and then went in the house. And then I just periodically, like every hour I'd come out and I'd look and I'd listen and you know, nothing didn't, didn't see or hear anything. And so the hours go by, the day goes by, and now we're into evening and it's getting really dark, almost completely dark. And my husband just looked at me and he says, honey, you know, it's January, she's probably frozen at this point because it was freezing which was my worst fear it was like we were to eventually find her and she would be frozen um he's like you did your best you gave it a good college hurrah and you know you did everything that you could to try and you know find the bird so i'm like you're right i relented i go outside i'm gonna just go to pick up the ipad and bring it back in the house and i turn off the ipad and all of a sudden i hear chirp chirp and i'm like wait a minute I know that chirp. <laughs> so I start calling to her. I'm like, echo, echo. And she's chirping. She's chirping right back to me. And I follow the sound. And sure enough, she's in one of my neighbor's trees, like way up. I'm talking on like the highest branch up there. And I can see because there's no leaves on the trees. Obviously, it's January. So I see that like cute little bird up there. And I thought, okay, well, now what do I do? I don't want to like walk away and go get a ladder or my husband because I'm afraid if I lose sight of her that she'll just fly away and then I won't know. So I do the only thing I think I can do, which is hold my finger up, like way up as high as I could because she was way up there. And as soon as I did that, she flew right down to my finger and she was like shaking. So I, they snuggled her up to me and she was like so happy to, to, be, to be, you know, back with somebody she knew. And so I just, well, let's just go. So I'm like, I walked into the house and she, she didn't move. I just kept her on my finger close, close to me and walked into the house and on my finger. And I go up to my husband and he's no way. It's all I can say, like, no way. I can't believe that you found her. And yeah, so that was, and of course I immediately like FaceTime my son and he about fell out of his chair up in his, you know, his house up at, you have I, and uh, so yeah, so, but now, now remember, like I told you, Q had brought the cage and all the food and everything with them. It's six hours, the university is six hours away. So now I have a bird and nowhere to put her. So I, I ended up having to go put her into a um, back bedroom. So I put her in the back bedroom. She flew up to the curtain rod, shut the door. It was, you know, Martin Luther King day. I was pray, pray, praying that the, still would be a pet store open because it was late now. Luckily they were, and I, I went over to Petco. I had to buy a whole new cage, new perches, new food, new everything. Uh, I make sure I, I got a nice cage that I knew would secure really well. And actually that's the cage that she still uses today because she actually really liked it a lot better. And yeah, so that is the story of how we rescued the bird. So never let people you know, bring you down, think positively. I'm such an animal lover. There's no way I, there's no way I could have just let it like go without at least giving it a really good shot. Cause I couldn't even imagine. And I think that she's, she still knows that it, that I did that. Cause she seems to always like me the best. <laughs> I do believe that she actually never really went far. I think she would just 
got spooked and she didn't know my older son and his girlfriend very well. So them calling to her, she wasn't gonna respond or even go to them because she was scared of them. She didn't know them. Now here's the thing, I do. I told my husband this, when, we, when my husband and I first got back to the house and I got out of the truck, I heard a chirp and I was like, I hear her. And my husband's like, you're hearing things. There's no way. And I, I could have swore, but then I didn't hear it again after we got out of the truck. So I thought, okay, maybe he's right. I'm, I was hearing things. I think she knew. She heard me when I got back and she was trying to chirp, you know, to me. And, um, and then I guess just gave up when I was walking around the neighborhood. So anyway, yeah, she's, uh, she's all safe now. So there you go. All right, let's get the camera turned around and we're going to look at all of my possibilities for PPU this month without having to purchase. So before we get started, I just want to say that I'm not here to try and dupe every single polish that's in PPU. I definitely feel like we should support our indie brands, um, but I'm here just to say that I know we can't afford all of them, so that's why I'm doing this. And I'm not going to get close on a lot of these, but you know, it's worth a shot. So I'm starting with Alchemy Lacquers, bouncing here and there and everywhere, which is described as a periwinkle crelly nail lacquer with large particle green to turquoise to blue shifting shimmer. It's very pretty. The way that I'm doing these will be that some will be a single polish that is just close to it, it's just been in my collection, and some will be combos. And so for this particular polish, I decided to do a combo since I didn't really have anything that was exactly like it. And so I came up with this, and I will say that the video is a lot different than the swatch picks. So the video makes it look a lot bluer than it really is in real life. So I did put up some side-by-side -side swatch picks, so you can see the difference there between the actual polish and then the one I came up with is on the right. I used this Salon Perfect called Frolic With Me, which is a periwinkle cream as a base. And then I used this one from KB Shimmer called Kawaii So Blue. I got it in HHC many years ago, many, many years ago. So, uh, but you could also use, I think I had a Sinful Colors. That was a pretty common one that would also do the trick. Um, it did definitely give the um, that kind of twinkle that the Alchemy one had. It's not exact, like I said, we're not trying to get exact, but it did get pretty close. I think like the certain angles, you can see more of the purple in it. Like I said, I, I do think pictures are a little more accurate than video. I've always thought that. So yeah, so that was my little combo for that one. All right, the next one's gonna be from Atomic Polish. I chose this one because I'm just craving these. I cannot wait for nice bright colors for summer. So I decided I'd pick this one. It is called Narf and it is a neon hot pink nail polish with Aurora pigment that shifts gold to pink. So yeah, it's pretty simple, It's but it's so beautiful. It's just such a pretty, pretty pink. I really liked it. Um, I think I, got pretty close with this one. We're going to look at the side by side here and then we'll talk about what I used to get there. Um, so yeah, look at the difference there. It's it's maybe just a tiny bit off. So I used this one from LA Colors called Swift. It's kind of jelly based, so I needed to use two coats to put the base on there. And then I used Zoya's Leia, which I always forget I have this topper. I liked it because it does have that pink to gold shift in it, which is, I believe, what they said for this um, atomic polish so that's why I used it and yeah I think um, this one was one of the ones that I got pretty pretty close I do love a nice hot pink going into summer for sure okay so the next one is from BCB lacquers and it's called yip yip this one is gorgeous and I'm gonna tell you right now it is on my wish list I love it it's described as a light sky blue crelly with gold orange glass flakes black metallic flakes an orange glow in the dark pigment, which is the glow in the dark. So yes, this is a glow in the dark. My combo I came up with it will not be glow in the dark, but it's pretty close. And again, the video is not showing you as well as it will in pictures. I think I should have gone a little bit lighter with those black flakies, which I could have done. I just wasn't paying attention. Um, so we'll talk about what I used here, but yeah, even though this is really close to what the BCB lacquers looks like. I still love the BCB lacquer one. So I think um, it's probably still gonna stay on my wish list. I'm probably still gonna get it. Uh, but let's uh, let's talk about what I used here. So uh, I had to use three different polishes for this one. 
Um, I'm not so worried that it doesn't glow in the dark just because like in summer here, it doesn't get dark till 11 p.m. So I'll probably be asleep. <laughs> so I'm not going to worry too much about, you know, the combo not being a uh, glow in the dark. But that being said, how did I make it? This one is mint candy apple. I think this is the newer version of it. It's also what I'm wearing on my nails in this video. And I topped that with this one from Cuticula, which is called For Goodness Flake. I actually wore those two in a combo recently with my friend Nic Nicole. We did a twin mani. And so I had it sitting on the swatch wheel when I was playing around with it a couple months ago. And I was like, you know, this looks familiar. So let me just add some of those black flakies to it. And look at how close those are, which I did use this one from Rogue Lacquer, which is Batsy. Um, which is very dense, so you just either thin it out or you need to just go in a little bit lighter. I do think um, it was pretty close. But again, like I said, I just, the BCB lacquer is so pretty. And you know, sometimes you don't wanna have to wear so many polishes to get the effect. Moving along, I'm gonna be talking about the Bees Knees Lacquer, which is not on my wish list, but I figured it would probably be on a lot of people's wish list. This one is called Evolve Today. It's described as a sheer lime green base with glowy orange micro flake shimmer. And it is really pretty. It's super, super sheer, um, which is kind of Bees Knees Lacquer's MO. All right, so I came up with two different options for this one. And again, the video is making this look a little bit more minty than it is. It's actually more limey green. Um, and the uh, polish itself is definitely more limey green. So this is, so I have two different ones. That first one was a flaky, I used a flaky shimmer topper. And then this one I used a sh like an actual shimmer topper. So let's talk about what they are. Um, this one I, so for the base for both of them, I'm gonna be using this one from Sinful Colors, which is from, I love this collection, this is Sheer Mattes. This one is called Sheer Truce, which is sort of that lime green jelly. With a, it has a little bit of a sparkle in it, but it's very faint. So the first one that Swatch you saw, I used Warrior from Fancy Gloss. And then the other one, which actually I think came out a little bit closer, was this one from Alchemy Lockers, which is called Romeo, which is more of a shimmer rather than a flake. So um, yeah, I don't know. They're both can't give you the same idea. I'm trying to show it to you on my skin instead of over my blue nail polish because it's so sheer. Um, but I do, I think this one with Romeo on top might be a tad bit closer. So I don't know, they're, they're close. They're not gonna be the same. There's always something magical about Bees Knees lacquer polishes that are just, you know, they just seem to pop. But again, we can't buy them all. Moving along, I always get suckered in by these Vanessa Molinas. This one is um, I Will Protect You, and it's described as a violet base with Aurora, mix of iridescent flakes and holographic glitters. And I have quite a few of this sort of formula from her. This one's, it's, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not a dupe, it's not, but it gets the same kind of idea and I didn't even do a combo with it I just this is just what it looks like on its own it does have these like little magenta flakies in there that might make it pull a little bit differently but how many flaky bombs can I own I mean I, well honestly I could own them all but you know so I just figured will this one scratch the itch is this good enough I also have another one with the same sort of formula not the same color though so I feel like mm, maybe maybe I could just forego any more of those from Vanessa Bellina, even though she tempts me every single time. Okay, the next one is definitely on my wish list and I did not even try to come up with a dupe for it. This is the Danglefoot. Um, it is called Oh My Glob. It's described as a primarily a pink gold shimmer and a grayish base with light blue reflective micro flakes, which can show as darker flakes when not under a light source. Under flash, the reflective flakes flakes grow glow bright blue I can never say that I've said that a few times now and I can never get it out right um okay so yeah I didn't even try it's so gorgeous look at this it glows I, I mean I did okay I take that back I did try I tried to use um like a gray jelly base I think it was an OPI and then I tried to do I had a reflective glitter from Salon Perfect which completely destroyed it. It was just way too much. Yeah, I tried. And so, nope, this one just is definitely going into my cart and good. That's why I'm doing this. So that I know there's no way I can even dupe it. It's beautiful. I love it. Next step is going to be the one from Dreamland Lacquer, which is called the Sea Haunt. It's 
really, very pretty. It's not really on my wish list, but I just thought it might be on a lot of people's wish lists. And so this one is described as a bright, almost neon teal filled with blue, violet, shifty shimmer, and it's opaque in two to three coats. So um, I did this a couple different ways, but I think I finally settled on the way that I thought it was most closely resembled. Um, I feel like sometimes these ones that just have shimmer in it, if you have a polish that has shimmer, you can get pretty close to it. This one, I think it came out a little brighter. Again, the video is not as nearly as accurate as the pictures when I do it. So, and you'll see that coming up here in a minute, I'm gonna show you um, what it looks like with a side-by-side -side with the picture. Although right here with the video and the picture of it side-by-side, -side, they look pretty close. So what did I use? I used um, this one from Salon Perfect from their neon line, which is called Miami Ice. Pretty cute little name there, Miami Ice. I think I used two coats of that. And then for on top of it, I used this one from LA Colors, which is called Lyrical. And it has that kind of that little shimmer in there. It, I feel like the Dreamland Lacquer was maybe a tad bit more blue. I don't know. In this side-by-side -side here, they look fairly close so um so i don't know i it wasn't on my wish list anyway but i feel like that one i could get close enough that it would scratch the itch if i really wanted it moving on next up is going to be this one from emily damali which is of course a flaky bomb which i love i'm going to kill the name it's called tetsuan atamu i think it's from astro boy and it's described as a dusty cobalt blue with subtle pink to green aurora shimmer and green to blue shifting iridescent flakes this is what i came up with um it's not in the video it's not really showing the flakes as well as you can see it in real life uh, and also the the base color that i use from Zoya here, which you're going to see, definitely has that kind of pink shimmer in there that you're seeing actually in the swatch pick of the Emily Damali. So that's why I chose it. So this is pretty new to my collection. It's a jelly. I, think I did use a couple coats of that. So I think it was like two coats of it. And then on top of that, I added some, um, a different topper, which is gonna be my favorite topper, which you'll see in a second. But I chose this one from Zoya because the Emily Damali definitely has some kind of like pinky red shimmer that's going throughout it. And so this one from Zoya definitely has that going through it. Maybe not quite as, maybe the Emily Damali leans a little bit more red in that shimmer. And this one's a little bit more pink, but definitely gets the idea. So the topper that I put on top is one of my faves, which is from Fancy Gloss and it's Ranger. I have to thank Nurse Jackie for turning me on to this one because I use it for so many manis. I, I love this topper. It's uh, it's really very versatile, let's put it that way. So here, again, we're looking at the video, but here's a side by side. Again, not, you know, like this, my, my goal is not to be exact. I mean, if you get exact, great. But my goal really is to just say, can I recreate it where enough that it's gonna scratch that itch and I don't feel like I have to buy every single polish. That's sort of my goal. I was trying to go in alphabetical order, but I did skip one that we'll come back to in just a minute. But the next one we're gonna talk about is the one from KB Shimmer called Sugar Spice and Everything Nice, which is described as a teal leaning blue base, which is perfect for a sky-like background for a shifting micro flake shimmer featuring a bubblegum pink color. The micro flakes easily flip into a vibrant yellow and green hues with a change in viewing angle. She has the best descriptions, I think, of polishes. <laughs> So this one's gonna be a real stretch. I just happened to be going through my collection and found something that had some of the elements, sort of the same base. Uh, it's This is from Glam Polish. It's not, obviously it's not, it's just, I was just trying to get the feel of it. It's not really close at all. In fact, this is probably a big fail, especially here on the video. It actually looks a little closer in, in real life than it does on the video. Um, but it has some of the same elements in it. This is called, I think your egg is hatching 2.0 from Glam Polish. Definitely has that teal base in there, different flakies that are in it though. So yeah, this is definitely, like I said, this is definitely the fail. Here's the thing though. Um, I always struggle with teals and I remembered as I was pulling this one out that I didn't love this one on me because it, the teal just didn't look right on me, which makes me think that I probably wouldn't like the KB Shimmer one because the teal in it might not look great on me. So maybe that's a good way to whittle that down. If it was on my wish list, it actually wasn't, but if it was. Moving along, next is Monarch Lacquer, and this one is called Party Animal. 
and it's described as a medium orangey pink jelly hue with color shifting flakes and a touch of violet shimmer. So uh, this one I think is one of the ones that I got pretty pretty darn close if I don't say so myself. Um, so and I but I did have to do a combo with it. It's gorgeous. It's really pretty. It's kind of sheer. But here's what I came up with. Uh, and I did do two coats of the base color with the one coat of topper. So looking at, look at this side by side. I know I'm keeping you guys in suspense here. What did I use to do this? Um, so I used an old polish that I got from, I think it was from PPU. Um, this is from Nail Hoot called Golden Mass Dynasty. I believe almost everybody got this one. It was like really a big deal when it first came out when it was featured in PPU. And then I used two coats of that, the Golden Mass Dynasty. And then to get that sort of purple shimmer look in there, I used this one from Fancy Gloss, which is called Mesmer. Now this is a flaky topper. It's not a shimmer, but when you get the little dipping of angles, you're gonna still get that same reflection of that purple. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty close. If anything, I feel like the Monarch maybe has a tad bit more gold in it than this one does, but it definitely would scratch the itch, especially with pinks that are those mid-tone pinks on me I always struggle with, so. Next up is gonna be the Penelope Luz. This one's called Soulmates. It is described as a baby blurple with sparkle shifting pigment and a little hollow and flaky pigment. And I was going through my collection, I just found a polish that shimmered the same exact way. Now in the video, this is gonna come up super blue. It does not look this blue in real life, so just wait for it. <laughs> um, so definitely in real life, you see more of that purple shimmer, which if I can get the angle right here on the camera, you might get to see it a little better, maybe like right there. Um, yeah, it definitely looks more purple in real life. Um, right here, it's just coming up blue, 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 but yeah, I promise you that in real life, it, it definitely looks more purple. And you're gonna see that in my side-by-side. -side. I actually took a swatch pick of the actual swatch wheel and the pick, look how close those are. Really, really, really close. So um, is it exactly the same? No, the Penelope Lose one is gorgeous. I would say if you really want it, go for it. Um, I would, except for that, this is a favorite color combination of mine. So I have a lot of polishes that are blue with a purple shimmer or blue with a pink shimmer. So um, anyway, this is Wildflower Lacquer Illumination. I'm not sure if I said that. Um, and yeah, that's what I use here. The next one is gonna be another complete fail for me. It's the polish for days. It's called I'm Too Pretty to Mess With, which is described as an aqua base with a strong metallic magenta yellow green iridescent shifting micro flaky shimmer. And yeah, I tried, it's not even close. This is so delicate, but again, we've got that sort of aqua teal base that I don't love, but I pulled out, oh, this one from Emily Damali, which I think everybody got when it was out too. It's called Sea of Lies, and it's not really close. I, I get it, but let's take a look at it anyway, because in some angles, it, it is kind of close. It's definitely a different color blue base. It's not as delicate as a polish for days at all. It has a similar shimmer in it, but it's just not, it's not as that delicate, like light aqua. It's definitely more of a heavy teal color versus the polish for days, which just is this sort of light, more aqua colored. Does it have the same feel? Yes. Here's the thing. I didn't love Emily DeMolly's Sea of Lies on me. I think it's a beautiful polish, but I didn't really love it on me. I'm not sure why I've kept it. It has the same shimmer in there. See how it's just a little bit darker base, but yeah, I, I'm definitely going to call this one a fail because I don't think it was nearly as close as in my mind I thought it was going to be. So this is the one that I skipped when as I was going in alphabetical order here, which is the one from Great Lakes Lacquer. I'm sure this is going to be on everybody's wish list. It's called Trap of Love. It is phenomenally gorgeous. Look at that shimmer in there. It's so, so, so pretty. It's described as a black and violet filled with a red to orange to gold shifting shimmer and holographic micro flake. So here's the thing. I was going through my collection and look what I found. I found this one from Bees Knees Lacquer and it is close. I mean, really, really close. In fact, when I was looking at swatch picks on my Instagram, I was convinced that it was really, really, I mean, like it was almost exactly duped. 
I will say that looking at these pictures side by side, that the Great Legs lacquer has a the shimmer seems a little bit brighter in it than the Bees Knees lacquer. So the Bees Knees lacquer is called um, it is my punishment, and it was in the Lion Sibling collection. I forget what it was called, but look at that next to each other. They are so so close now. Do I still want the Great Lakes lacquer? Absolutely. It's just such a pretty, pretty polish and they aren't exact, exact dupes. So I think I could justify having it in my collection. But if you were short on money and you had to get rid of one and you already have this one, that might be a good one to say, okay, well, I already have something that's very similar. And the last one I have for you is from Sassy Sauce. It's called Yoohoo. And it's described as a glowy blue shimmer with black blue UCC flakies, blue purple ghost flakies, and micro hollow flakies. Here's the thing this one is definitely on my wish list. This is definitely a fail. I tried and failed miserably to dupe this. Uh, so yeah, this is a this is definitely one that I'm I'm going to be getting. Here's my try. Yeah, we, I just, I couldn't get there. Um, I couldn't get the ghost flakies. I do, I have a polish, which you're gonna see here in a second, that has those ghost flakies in it, and I just could not get them to pop on top of this glitter bomb. So, and the, and I think that the hollow in this base that I use is not the same, because the Sassy Sauce one looks a little more cool tone. This looks like a warm toned hollow, where the Sassy Sauce definitely has a cool toned hollow in it. So let's just talk about what I tried to do. This is from Hollow Taco. It's called Rainbow Snow, Rainbow Snow it's called. And it's a definitely a hollow flaky, not flaky bomb, hollow glitter bomb. And then I used this one from Alchemy Lockers called Virtual Insanity, which has the black and blue flakies in there and more, I think it's got reflective glitter in there too. I, there's definitely the blue, you saw the blue glowing flakies in it, but when I put it on this polish, it just got lost. It, it was just completely lost in there, so yeah. Not even close is what I put on here. Not even close <laughs> because yeah, it's not blue at all. So that one's a definite. So I think I know exactly what I will be getting because yeah, it this it helped me. It helped me to decide what I really want. Even though sometimes I could get close, I, there's polishes I still wanna get. And then there are polishes that I couldn't even remotely get close to that I 100% know that will need to go into my cart and PPU on Friday. So what do you think? Let me know if you've been trying to do these same kind of things with your collection. We, I know we all have these massive collections and sometimes we forget what's in them. So we need to go back through them and decide and see what's close. I'd like to have all the polishes in the world, but it's just not feasible. Thank you for joining me today. Please like and subscribe. See you in the next video.